This accident could have been avoided, but the student forgot what his instructor had taught him. By not remaining calm, he lost directional control. His use of ailerons, rudder, and elevator during the after landing hey, roll before was... you get lost in the nuts and bolts, I gotta set these guys straight on something. Bird Dog, are you here again? I thought maybe I could get through one film without your able assistance. Okay, I'll shut up. But first, I gotta say something. Well, that's what I mean. You can shut up and say something at the same time? All right, go ahead. Look at this mess. Pay attention now. This bird dog is just barely worth fixing. But the guy who was flying it didn't even get a scratch. I ask you, is that fair? It may not seem fair to you, bird dog, but it's a good thing for students to know about. Aviators are practically never injured in landing accidents. Out of 316 planes damaged by loss of directional control, the United States Army Board for Aviation Accident Research reports only two aviators injured. Only two? And 316 planes mangled? That's right, two injuries in a little over three years. 316 planes? What about them? Repair and replacement of those planes cost the Army $750,129. Three quarters of a million bucks? $750,001 bills? <laughs> this picture better be good. Let's get going. Most of these accidents were caused by two common problems, lack of confidence and overconfidence. Let's take two of them one at a time and find out why they occurred. The first accident happened because the student had a deep-seated doubt of his ability to handle the aircraft in landing. As he flies base leg, he's calm and capable, but he gets himself into just the situation he'd hoped to avoid. He turns on to final too soon, and now he must try to readjust his position to align himself with the runway. The old panic takes over. As he comes in, he's so eager to get it on the ground that he rounds out a little high, and as the plane stalls, he bounces. He adds throttle for a go-around, but at that moment the plane touches down again. Now look, his feet are on the brakes. The plane swerves and he slams it in rudder and aileron to correct. The right brake goes down hard. A severely damaged L-19 caused by loss of directional control. No, caused by a guy getting shook. Could he help that bird dog? Sure he could. If he's got a weak point, like getting shook on landings, he works on it. Lots of guys get squeamy feelings. You gotta fight back with willpower and know-how. That's what the psychologists say too, Bird Dog. Make a small and willful attempt to control your emotions and you'll win every time. Right. As psychologists say, think about what you're doing and you won't have time to think about your heart going pity pat. Guess you should know about psychology, bird dog. Now let's get on to the next case. The student who was overconfident. He came within inches of totally destroying an L-19 because he was too sure of himself. He was shooting landings in a light crosswind and doing a good job of it. Six times out of six, he'd set it down perfectly, right on the mark without a bounce. This time, as he approached runway control, he couldn't resist taking a look, making sure they appreciated his ability. Now watch as he unknowingly centers the stick. The plane starts to weather vane. He feels it going, but it's too late. Man, that was an action-packed bit. I'm sure the student thought so too. Maybe this has taught him a lesson, but the price is too high. He knows now that a landing is not complete until the plane has slowed to taxi speed. Know what? What bird dog? This guy and the other guy both got the same trouble. Neither one had his mind in what his airplane was doing. You're right, bird dog. The key to directional control is absolute concentration on one thing, your course down the runway. Maybe you should review the controls they use on the ground. All right, let's start right at the beginning. First, let's list the controls which maintain direction on the ground. The rudder and tailwheel, brakes, ailerons, and throttle. In addition, the elevators help these controls to do their job by keeping the tail on the ground. Let's deal with them one at a time. The simplest definition of directional control is that it is the technique of keeping your aircraft aligned with the center line of the runway throughout the after landing roll. After touchdown, 
and up to the point where you slow down, you're chiefly dependent on your rudder for directional control. As long as you have sufficient speed to provide air movement over the rudder, it will turn your plane. Now let's say that a gust of crosswind hits you immediately after touchdown. If you do not apply rudder correction, the aircraft will weather vane or turn toward the wind, causing a complete loss of directional control. In this same situation, a slight rudder adjustment promptly applied will compensate for the crosswind and keep you heading straight down the runway. The rapid forward movement of the aircraft causes a swift current of air to move over your rudder. Next, let's take a situation where you have rolled further down the runway and your aircraft is moving at a slower rate of speed. When the gust of crosswind hits you now, it would be more effective in weather vaning you, since there is a less rapid air current moving over your rudder. Therefore, a large rudder movement must be made to compensate for the crosswind and keep your heading correct. This third situation shows us still later in the roll and the aircraft is now moving at an even slower speed. Therefore, the air movement over the rudder is now considerably slower. When the gust of crosswind hits now, any movement of the rudder pedal causes the rudder and steerable tailwheel to move. Working together, they compensate for the crosswind. At slower speeds, the tailwheel does most of the work as it moves with the rudder. Now let's see how brakes help us to maintain directional control. When a strong gust hits you and your crosswind adjustment of rudder and tailwheel is not correcting sufficiently, apply a little brake on the downwind wheel to correct the swerve. Brakes must be used smoothly and with moderation. It is easy to overcorrect and start to turn in the opposite direction. How do your ailerons affect directional control? From crosswind landing instructions, you know that if you have a crosswind, you must hold the stick into the wind throughout your landing. This is SOP. But let's say you don't have a steady crosswind. Instead, you have a variable wind. When a gust hits you like this, you weather vane into it. And your upwind wing rises. Your fuselage acts as a partial barrier, preventing the full force of the gust from passing over your downwind wing. Therefore, there is more airflow and more lift on your upwind wing than on your downwind wing. By applying stick into the wind, you decrease lift on the upwind wing and increase lift on the downwind wing. As a result of your correction, the upwind wing drops and we realign the aircraft with the runway. What part does throttle play in directional control? If your aircraft starts to weather vane, attempt to correct by using the controls as previously indicated. If weather vaning persists, then add throttle. Here's how it works. Added throttle increases torque effect, which counters the weather vaning movement. At the same time, the increased RPM adds to the flow of air over your empennage control surfaces, improving their effectiveness. This causes your aircraft to be realigned with the runway. One word of caution. When using throttle, remember torque effect. It is easy to overcorrect with throttle, causing the aircraft to turn beyond the point of realignment. As we said before, the elevator helps all the other controls do their job by keeping the tailwheel on the ground. By holding your stick full back throughout your ground roll, the wind striking the elevators will force your tail down. This additional loading of the tail helps to prevent weather vaning and assists your rudder and tailwheel in steering your plane. In addition, by holding your tail on the ground, you keep the center of gravity behind your main gear. With the elevator up and the CG well to the rear, you can add brakes and also throttle without danger of nosing over. Here's an example of an aviator using all his controls properly to keep his aircraft aligned with the runway after landing. Do you have anything to add, Bird Dog? I'll review and throw in my two cents at the same time. Know what guys always say after rolling one up?
I don't know what happened. I had everything under control, and the next thing I know, I was sitting there in a pile of busted machinery. <laughs> That's a likely story. If you got everything under control, you know what's happening, and you don't bust nothing. Here's the list of things you get to work with. I ain't going through all the details of how to use them. I'm going to give you some hot tips from my long years of experience. First, rudder. The rudder's good as long as you're going pretty fast and it would seem that your tail wheel would take over when you slow down. But the tail wheel may not do it all. When you're slowing down, use the brakes if you gotta. But don't stand on them. No panic stops. Ease them on smooth and gentle. And if you got the rudder on, don't let it off when you use the brakes. Ailerons are more help than lots of guys realize. As soon as you feel a wing even suggest that it would like to go up, ease a little stick into it. Throttle sends a shot of air over your tail. With the engine speeding up, torque will pull the nose to the left, helping you to straighten your plane. Elevators. Stick full back whenever you're rolling out to help all the other controls to do their job. All right, bird dog, does that wind it up? One more thing. See these pedals? In the air, you can push them any darn way you want. Accidentally putting your brakes on at 2,000 feet ain't gonna hurt nobody. But on the ground, keep your heels on the floor when you use rudder, or you're liable to make a mess like this. Pilots don't get hurt in ground loops, but us guys do. Someday, us guys are gonna get the upper hand, and you guys better look out.